Welcome to my channel. This time, I will be showing you solutions on the problems about simple stress under strength of materials. But before that, please subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell after you watch this video. In this video, we will be solving this problem. For the truss shown in the figure, determine the cross-sectional areas of bars BE, BF and CF so that the stresses will not exceed 100 mega newtons per square meter in tension or 80 mega newtons per square meter in compression. A reduced stress in compression is specified to avoid the danger of buckling. In this problem, we are going to solve for the cross-sectional areas of bars BE, bars BF, and bars CF. The first step we have to do is to use the section method. In here, we will pass a cutting plane passing through bars BE, BF, and CF. In your screen, the blue line is our cutting plane. Next is to make a free body diagram on the right side of the cutting plane. You can see that in our free body diagram, the green arrows represent the bars that we are going to solve later on. Now, the next step is to solve for the hypotenuse of the slopes in bar BE and BF. First, let us solve the hypotenuse for bar BE, given the slope of 3 and 4. We just simply use the formula for Pythagorean theorem. And we have, the square root of 3 square plus 4 square. The answer is 5. Next, for bar BF, the slope is 3 and 8. Again, to solve for its hypotenuse, we just simply use Pythagorean theorem. And we have, the square root of 3 square plus 8 square. The answer is the square root of 73. Now, after determining the values for the slope of bars BE and BF, our next step is to solve for the load at bar CF, BF and BE. We need to solve this because we will need it in finding the cross-sectional area later on. We begin solving the load at CF. To solve for that, we will use moment of force. And we will have our moment at B, to solve for load CF. We now have, summation of moment at B is equal to zero forces going to the clockwise direction is positive. We have, negative CF multiplied to its distance from point B which is 8, added to positive 40 kN multiplied to its distance from B which is 3, added to 50 kN multiplied to its distance from B of 6, which is now equal to 0. We transpose values, and we have, CF times 8, is equal to 40 kN multiplied to 3, plus 50 kN multiplied to 6. We simply solve and we have, CF is equal to 420 kN per meter all over 8 meters. The answer is 52.5 kN. CF is a compression force since it is going towards joint F. Next, we solve for the value of load at BE. To solve for that, we will take a moment at point F. We have, Summation of moment at F is equal to zero. Forces going on the clockwise direction is positive. We get the values and we have, negative BE multiplied to its slope of 3 all over 5, multiplied to its distance from F which is 4. In taking the slope, we always remember that, we will use the X component all over the hypotenuse if we're taking the moment of force, that's why we have 3 all over 5. Next is we add 50 kN multiplied to its distance from F of 3 meters. Which is now equal to 0. We transpose values and we have, BE times 2.4 is equal to 50 multiplied to 3. We simply solve and we have 150 kN per meter all over 2.4 meters. The answer is 62.5 kN. We have a tension value for BE since if you notice, its direction is going away from point E. Next, let us solve for the value of load at BF. To solve for that, we will be using the summation of force vertical. Our forces with respect to Y axis. We have, summation of forces at Y axis is equal to zero. Force directed upwards is positive. We have, BE multiplied to its slope of 4 all over 5. In getting the slope, we always use the Y component all over the hypotenuse if it is using the summation of force vertical, or forces with respect to Y axis, 
we now add bf multiplied to its slope of 8 all over the square root of 73 minus 40 kilonewton minus 50 which is equal to 0. A while ago, we already solved for the value of BE which is 62.5 so we simply substitute to the equation. Next, we transpose values, and we have BF multiplied to 8 all over the square root of 73 is equal to negative 62.5 times 4 all over 5 plus 40 kilonewton plus 50 kilonewton. We simply solve and we have 40 all over 8 divided by the square root of 73. The answer for our load BF is 42.72 kilonewton. We have a tension force for bar BF because its direction is going away from joint F. Our next step is to solve already for the values of our cross-sectional areas in bars BE, BF and CF. To solve for the area, we will be using the generic formula, area is equal to the quotient of load all over the stress value. This is derived using the formula of stress which is load all over the cross-sectional area. On the lower left part of your screen, I provided the summary of the loads that we solved a while ago. Now, we begin solving the cross-sectional area for bar CF. To solve for that, we have area of CF is equal to the load at CF divided by its stress. We simply substitute the values and we have. 52.5 kN all over 80 MN per square meter. If you are wondering where did I get 80 MN per square meter, let us go back to the problem. It says, we will use 80 MN per square meter if the load is a compression. And since we have a compression at load CF, we use 80 MN per square meter. On the other hand, we will use 100 MN per square meter if it's tension. We will use 100 MN per square meter later if we will solve for the cross-sectional area of BE and BF, since their load are both tension. Going back to our solution, we have to convert 52.5 kN into MN using the conversion factor of 1 MN is equal to 1000 kN. At the same time we will convert meter square to millimeter square using the conversion factor of 1 meter is equal to 1000 mm. We have to square the conversion factor to obtain square millimeter and cancel out square meter. After that, we simply solve and we have 0.0525 mega newton all over 8 times 10 raised to negative 5 mega newton per square millimeter. We now have a value for our area at CF of 656.25 square millimeter. Next, let us solve for the value of area of BE. To solve for that, we will be using the formula, cross-sectional area of BE is equal to load at BE all over its stress value. We simply substitute values and we have, 62.5 kN all over 100 MN per square meter. Again, we will use the value for our stress at BE of 100 MN per square meter because the load at BE is tension. Now, we have to convert again our values just like what we did in solving the area for CF. We have, 62.5 kN multiplied to 1 MN all over 1000 kN, all over, 100 MN per square meter, multiplied to the square of 1 meter all over 1000 mm. We simply solve and we have 0.0625 MN all over 1 times 10 raised to negative 4 MN all over square millimeter. The answer now for our cross-sectional area of BE is 625 square millimeter. Next, let us solve for the value of area of BF. We will use again the same formula for cross-sectional area, and we have now, 42.55 kN all over 100 mega newton per square meter. Again, the load BF is a tension force so we will use 100 mega newton per square meter. We convert values, just like what we did on the other areas. And we now have a final answer for the cross-sectional area of BF to be 427.2 square millimeters. That is now the solution for our problem. In here, I provided a summary of the answers. We have, 656.25 square millimeters for the cross-sectional area of CF.
we have 625 square millimeters for BE, and finally, 427.2 square millimeters for BF. Please do not forget to subscribe before you exit.